so it's raining out, and it's nice to sit outside. It's not cold rain. There were even some kids playing out earlier. Um, then there was a flash flood warning they had to go inside. But um, it was actually sort of warm and humid earlier. Now that there's rain, it doesn't feel humid anymore, but there's almost that smell you get when it rains. You know, it's sort of hard to describe, but... It's nice to just take a moment and sit outside on the porch watching the rain, you know. It's fine, it's sort of harder, at least when it wasn't raining as much earlier, it was harder to see the drops in the air, but you could see them when they splashed on the ground. But now you can, it's pretty thick, you can just see that the, the, there's just a lot of rain everywhere, like uh, thunder and stuff. But it's sort of a cozy day. I used to call them mother load days because. I actually, you know, some people prefer, like, blue sunny days, but I feel like I'm obligated to do something when it's, like, bright and sunny outside, but when it's raining and, like, gray and cloudy, it's sort of cozy, and you can just stay inside and do whatever you feel like, and it's nice to listen to the rain, like, on the roof, and, you know, it's very, very cozy. But, um, as nice as this is, obviously, I'm, I'm not just going to talk about rain now. Um, as nice as that would be, but there's a sort of mentality you have when you go for a walk or go out in the rain or just take a moment, you know, and that mentality, I feel like it's just so different from how you feel playing sometimes in league. It's, it's just sort of crazy to, to think of, to, to think about how, it, how your thinking feels when you're you know, out enjoying the rain compared to like when you're flaming the, the, I can't even think of something right now, when you're flaming someone in a game, just like the, the, the different perspective you have, it just feels so narrow in a game. And um, this, this is going to bring me to the first, um, first thing people, first reason people say not to mute everyone is, um, why, why bother? It doesn't change anything. You know, you can just ignore what people say. But I think when you're playing a game like League, it, it affects your mindset a lot. Um, there's so much going on even without the chat. Like, just the game itself is already pretty taxing to be playing and... You know, maybe you're going to be worried about, like, whether you win or lose the game even, which can be stressful, or you just want to, you know, if you win two games tonight, you get promoted or something, and, and you actually really want to win, but, and that, all that stuff is just going on and sort of taking, taking your focus and um, your perspective, and, you know, the, I don't think the community is that bad, but this is this is where the when I said there was a flash flood warning, I was not lying about there being a flash flood warning, <laughs> and neither were they. But um, the when you're in a game, you know the, the perspective can get very narrow and. Um, you can get very concentrated and, on winning the game, and you see people's mentality suffer a lot. And I mean, it happens to some people more than others, but it's often difficult in the game when you're the one that's happening too to realize it's happening to you yourself. Like in the moment, you just don't notice because um, it puts you in difficult situations where you really want to win. You're doing your best and trying very hard. You're putting effort into it, and stuff happens. Like, that's just how the game is. That's how Solo Q is, and it's not going to change, you know. You can't just avoid the problem by deciding to win every game, and then everyone will be nice. Like, you're going to lose some games. So, for example, you know, this one game, um, I was in a game with another support main, and in Champion Select, you know, he banned our... Kennen one trick, one tricks Kennen, and he went top. So basically, we had like three off rolls, and because um, he forced the Kennen onto an native carry, and we had an off roll jungler as well. And 
you know, it was sort of doomed from champion select. In hindsight, first of all, I should have dodged. I think I would have had to wait like 30 minutes or something probably, but it would have been worth it, you know, to not play the game. I could just go do something else for 30 minutes. But instead I played the game, and, you know, I for some reason at the moment, in the moment, I didn't realize I should mute everyone. And that ended up being a pretty big mistake, I think. I, you know, I, w I don't think I'm a particularly toxic person, and this guy's a streamer, so... And he doesn't have, like, a reputation, I don't think, of being toxic, so I'm, I'm assuming he's not very toxic either. But, you know, the game puts you in difficult situations where you're going to lose this game, probably, and, you know, it feels... At the time, it felt like, you know, he was just being sadistic. Like, he was saying, like, even though the game at 15 minutes was, like, completely over, people were just, like, AFKing in base, like, no, we're not surrendering because I enjoy making you all suffer and stuff, and I'm going to prolong the agony as long as I can. And, and I, I felt like he just, like, permanently or purposefully ruined everyone's experience, and it was just terrible. But... You know, in hindsight, he was in a tough situation, too. He didn't want to get auto-filled top lane. Um, he was probably streaming, so he didn't want to, like, waste time by dodging. And, you know, in hindsight, I would say, oh, shit, you know, sorry, I should have just muted everyone and played the best I could, and whatever happened, like, win-lose, probably lose, but, you know, um, muting everyone is better. And... In the moment, I, you know, I should have known that, but League just puts you in, in a situation where you're thinking about other stuff, you're focused on winning, your perspective is narrower, and you don't realize, because there's all this other stuff going on that affects your mindset, you know, all these other factors. And they make it so that even if you don't um, flame anyone, if you, if you can manage to keep everyone unmuted but stay completely positive, even the fact that it takes effort to stay positive in uh, a game means that you're taking that effort away from focusing on winning the game and putting it into staying positive. And so I think it's better to just forget that all of your teammates even exist um, which you can do if you just automatically mute them all. You don't have to worry about, you know, wh what they think, they feel, any of that stuff. Um, and you might not realize it at first, but it's actually a pretty big burden off your shoulders and off of your mindset because it just lets you keep a very focused on the game mentality as opposed to um, focused on all sorts of different things, like all these, you know, this troll is, is making me lose my promo game or whatever, like, you don't have to care about any of that, you can just play your champion and enjoy it. And so it just keeps you clear of some distractions, because the game has enough going on already, there's so much going on in the game that it really takes all of your attention. So, having your, even though you might not think you need to mute everyone because, you know, you, you think you're okay, you're not a toxic person, you know, you don't flame people. It's still helpful to just get rid of the distractions by muting everybody. So that's the first reason. Um, and then the second one is sometimes people say, well, you know, chat gives you communication and you don't want to lose that communication. So to respond to that, I think I don't think chat actually brings very much in the way of communication for league games. See, the thing is, there are pinks, right? And I think you can communicate almost anything through pinks that you need to. You know, they have pinks for everything. You can ping, like, warded. You can ping, like, well, no, you can't ping warded, but that one's coming. So I think that's the, maybe the one exception, but... Um, I think it's on PBE that it, the warded thing is coming, but I might be wrong about that. But uh, you can ping like careful on a, in a bush. You can for the ward. You can ping like I'm on my way to Baron. You could target Baron. 
You can ping how long Baron's spawning in. You can ping how long the enemy red buff is spawning in. You can ping like flash timers, summoner spells, where you're going, like asking for assistance. Um, and there are, you know, a few more complicated things that you might want to express. But the thing is, any sort of communication that uses chat, just, um, I think it's either too difficult to type it all out in the middle of a game, or um, if you have it, uh, if someone types out this complicated message about this crazy strategy they want to pull off, where you know you're all like, if it's if it's such a complicated strategy that you can't express it through pings, then I don't think it's possible to pull it off in solo queue. Um, you know, solo queue is like okay. Hopefully everyone knows what they're doing. Like you know, the everyone on the team knows. Okay, we should be grouped. The guy has teleport. He should go by. We go to Baron. Like if people don't already know what their roles are in solo queue, you know, you're not going to be able to explain it to them in chat, and it's just going to be frustrating if you try and do do that. Um, just because you don't really have enough time to communicate things in the chat, you know. People try and explain stuff in guides and, and pages and pages, and it barely works. If, if it even does work, I, I would doubt that. So you're not going to be able to teach someone how to play or get taught how to play in the chat during a game. There's just not enough time. You know, you're busy clicking. Holy shit, that was loud. Oh my god. Wow. You know, I have a dog who's afraid of, of thunder. It's not the storms that scare her, it's the air pressure. Um, and and that actually terrifies, like, she's probably running around right now, like, her pants, she, she, like, shakes, she vibrates. Wow. Um, wow. Dude, storms, you could see why people would be like, storms are, like, Thunder gods or whatever, angry. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Um, but the the communication, you know, in games, there's all sorts of distractions. Just as I got distracted right now by the thunder, people get distracted by playing the game, which is fair enough. And there's just not enough time to really communicate in game. So, you know, you can maybe there's like a tiny area between strategies that you can't express through pings, but are simple enough to execute in solo queue, but I don't think that it's really a big enough area to actually consider it a big advantage for communication. Like maybe with voice chat or something, you know, you could actually have that sort of level of coordination. <coughs> coordination beyond just what pings offer. But I think right now where you have to type everything out, um, there really isn't much of an advantage gained by chat in solo queue in terms of communication. It just takes too long to type things out, too long to digest them, and there's not enough time to digest them, and um, the, the communication tends to be very poor. And, like, the sort of thought experiment to support this is... How many games have you had where, you know, because of stuff that you can communicate in the chat, not through pings, but, you know, you have, um, you have like, someone saying, okay, this is what we're going to do, this is the game plan, and the whole team is on board, and everyone's on the same page and playing, like, and it, it's all because of the communication in the chat that, that your team works together and wins the game. Like, I think those are pretty few and far between. There are some, definitely the games where everyone's on the same page, but I feel like in most of those, for me, it's um, without actually typing in the chat. Um, like, you know, I'll play very, you know, the most intense game I've played recently was um, against, um, uh, like, a, a rank one silver player, and a really good jungler, and the, the rest of this team was really good too, and, like, our team was behind, like, three Infernal Drakes, and 
basically both teams were like fully challenger teams and it was a really good game i mean there were some you know obviously at solo queue there was some intentionally feeding or not intentional intentional feeding but there was some feeding going on but like overall it was a very good game i think for solo queue standards it it wasn't a good game by like you know I, I'm, I'm digressing the point is this was the most like intense game i've played recently and no one typed anything in the chat. You know, there was, like, some communication in Champ Select, like, Build Arden Sensor. Um, there was, uh, like, 30 minutes into the game, once we were, like, clearly winning, um, some jokes where, like, our Garen and Jarvin were saying, like, Demacia and that kind of... But, like, there was... There were pings, but there were no... There was no typing. And um, I think in most of the games where you have, like, a good good level of teamwork, it's not due to the communication in the chat. And I think much more often the, the chat actually works against that sort of teamwork. And so this is the thought experiment. Think of all the games where, um, the ch how many games you've had where the chat has, has improved the level of teamwork and communication. And then think of the amount of games where um, chat has been a hindrance. And I think, it, if you think about it, um, chat will have lost you more games than you've won because of it. So, like, yeah, chat's lost you more games than it's won for you. So, um, or, you know, maybe you're just a genuinely, uh, naturally, effortlessly positive person. They exist. There is, you know, like, to name a few, like Olay, Stunt, Heisendong, um, Shifter. And these are players who, you know, they might be in tilting situations, they might not be happy, but they don't type in the chat about it. Um, but I think those players are a very small minority. And like I was saying with the thought experiment, chat loses you more games than you win. And that's true for most people. Obviously, you could be the exception to the rule there, like one of those players I just listed. But I think for the majority of players, um, chat loses you more games than it wins you. So, I mean, you could say, okay, well, I'm, I'm just a really positive person. And if that's the case, you know, then sure, disregard all of this. Go go play some league with the chat on. But if that's not you with which, I mean, chances are that's not you because of this thought experiment where, on average, chat is ruining more games than it helps, then I think you have to realize that more often than not, chat is a hindrance to your communication. So on average, it is just better to mute your mute people. And not mute pings, right? The whole, the whole uh, reason you still have communication, even without the chat, is the pings offer almost everything now, um, but um, I think it is fine to just slash mute all and for your communication's sake. And um, the last thing, well, no, two more things. So one briefly is that people say, okay, well, why don't you just mute as soon as someone becomes toxic? Like, don't immediately mute everyone, just mute them once they start flaming. I think that's fine. That's certainly better than not muting them at all. But I think once someone is uh, being annoying, the damage is already done. Like, you're still seeing them. This is sort of going back to the first reason I was talking about, um, where uh, if, if you're thinking, of, you're actually taking a time to think about other people, that's another distraction on top of all the distractions in a game. Like, you can't waste your focus on thinking about other people. But anyways, the last point is, this is sort of hypocritical of me because, you know, there are plenty of times when I don't mute the chat. But um, just quickly to respond to that last uh, reason, um, I, I know who I'm playing with a lot of the time, and I think there's much more to be gained from... Um, leaving, like, I'm a cutie pie unmuted than there is from leaving, like, a random silver player unmuted just because, you know, you know that he's a funny guy. He's not going to um, tilt you in the chat. So when there are these, like, players and streamers, you know, like the ones I was saying earlier, like Shifter or 
Chick-fil-A or Stein's like you know that even if it's a very tilting situation, because those players are like known quantities, um, it's fine to leave them unmuted. And there are some players who actually have a lot of insight about the game, so it might be worth actually listening to them. But I don't think that applies if you're just playing with like random solo queue players. Um, and in those games, I think it's for sure better to mute if you don't know who your teammates are.